Hello, my front porch friend. <laughs> well, I'm in an unusual place with a shovel, with an unusual word from the Lord. I heard the Lord speak to me so clearly this morning for me and you, and he said to tell you it's time to start digging ditches. Now, I know for some people, they would hear that and think that's not good news, but I'm telling you, it is great news. Now, let me, first of all, I wanna just give you a little backdrop on this story. The first time we hear this word actually is in 2 Kings, the third chapter. Now, the preceding chapter, you have Elijah being translated into heaven on a chariot, dropping his mantle to his predecessor, Elisha. So Elisha has just hit the scene. In the third chapter though, you have Jehoram, who is the son of Ahab and Jezebel. He has just become king of Israel. And the Bible says about him that even though he wasn't as wicked as his mom and dad, he still did evil in the sight of the Lord. Now, you also have over here Jehoshaphat, who has just become the king of Judah, all right? Now, there's a third king that's gonna be involved in this story. He is the king of Moab, who decides to rebel against Israel. Well, Jeho Jehoram was pretty upset about this, and he says, you know what, this means war. So Jehoram goes over to Jehoshaphat. He says, listen, Mo King Moab is rebelling against us. We're going to war against him. Do you want to join us in this fight? Well, Jehoshaphat says, absolutely. My men are your men. My horses are your horses. Where do you want to meet? So he says, well, come on down. Let's just meet over here in the, in the wilderness of Edom. And so they go talk to the king of Edom. And so they said, you want to join with us in this fight? And he says, absolutely. So now you've got three kings and their armies coming against the king of Moab. Now, while they're on their way to Moab together, they're wandering around in this big old wilderness of Moab. And the Bible says that now for seven days, they have been wandering with no water for men or beast. Now that's a problem. So obviously now their canteens are empty. They've run out of the water they had with them and they're panicking, understandably so. They're probably thinking, you know, it's not a matter of the Moabites killing us. We're gonna die of thirst out here. So they're kind of freaking out. And so Jehoram is like, goes over to Jehoshaphat and he's like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? So Jehoshaphat's like, well, is, there, is there a prophet among us? Is there anybody there? If there's a prophet among us, then the prophet can hear from God. Well, one of the officials speaks up and he says, Elisha, the prophet, is among us. And he was the servant of Elijah. Well, Jehoshaphat says he can hear from God. <laughs> I love this. So the Bible says they go to Elisha, which what a miracle that Elisha was hanging out with him, right? So they go over there to Elisha and they tell him what's going on. Well, Elisha was not too fond of Jehoram because obviously he had just been on Mount Carmel with Elijah dealing with Jezebel. So Elisha's like, you know what? He looks at Jehoram and he says, I don't, why don't you go ask one of your uh, mom and dad's pagan prophets what to do? Well, Jehoram says, no, God has sent us out here. We've got to have an answer. So Elisha says, you know what? He says, actually, I wouldn't even normally speak to you, but because I have respect for Jehoshaphat, I'll go before the Lord. And the first thing Elisha does, I love this, he asked for a minstrel. He says, get me a minstrel. I need somebody to start playing the harp. I need somebody to start playing music. And I just love that because it just kind of shows you the importance of, of music in, 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 in the atmosphere of worship and getting us into a place where, where we can worship and hear God. So they be, this, this minstrel begins to play the harp. Elisha's before the Lord, and he's seeking the Lord to hear, God, what do you want to do about this problem? We are in a desert. We are in a wilderness. There's no water. What do you want to do? Well, he hears the Lord, and he comes back and he says to Jehoram and to Jehoshaphat and to the armies and to you and me in 2023, and this is what he says. Elisha looks up and he goes, this is what the Lord says. Fill this valley with ditches. Fill this valley with ditches because I am going to fill this valley with water. And he says, you're not going to hear wind and you're not going to hear rain. In other words, he says too, you know what? This is a simple thing for God. 
God is going to deliver the Moabites into your hands. Oh, oh, there's just so much in that for you and me to hear. There's so much of a word in that. Just first of all, let me stop here and say this. I want you to notice one of the most important parts of this. In fact, I wrote it down. In my, let me get out of my pulpit right here, my tree pulpit. This is what I heard for us. First of all, I want you to notice the need remained. They have a need, which is water. And the need remained until they turned toward God. God was not speaking to them until they spoke to him first, until they acknowledged God first. He saw their need on the second day they needed water because the Bible says they wandered around for seven days. He didn't move on the second day. He didn't move on the fifth day. He didn't move on the sixth day, even though he saw their need. But it's not just need that moves God. It's faith. So it's not need. He didn't step down and go, whoo, they need water. I need to get down there. No, he waited until they said, God, what do you have to say? What do we do? When you acknowledge God, when you acknowledge God, when they move toward God, God moved toward them. And he moved toward them with a word that was going to require faith on their part. I love this. God gave them a word when God did finally speak to them to tell them what to do. It was an act of faith. First of all, he told them what they were going to have to do. And then he gave them a promise. I need you to dig ditches because I'm going to fill this valley with water. In other words, there's a blessing coming and you've got to get ready for it. Oh, I feel that for you. There's a blessing coming and you've got to get ready for it. Come on. Can you hear that, sweetheart? This is your word today. Now, I want you to notice what they had to do first. They had to move first toward God. Then they had to obey what God said to do, which was crazy and didn't make any sense. He told them to start digging ditches. Now, imagine this. Jehoram and Jehoshaphat's got to go down here to these tired, thirsty, half-dead men wandering around in this wilderness. And they said, here's what God said. Start digging ditches and get ready for water. Excuse me. Do you know how tired and thirsty we get the shovel? Passing shovels. Get every shovel you can find and start digging ditches. And God, God only asked of them no more than what they were able to do. God wanted them to do something that required faith on their part. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And God moves toward faith. In other words, you do your part, which is the possible part. You do your part, which is just the believing part. And God's going to do his part, which is the impossible part. And God will do his part, which is the manifestation of the miracle. I love this. They had to dig ditches before the water was manifested. Come on. They just had to start digging ditches. Now, there's, there's no sign that there's any water anywhere in sight. This is what God said. Start digging the ditches first. You do your part. Come on. And when people are saying, you know what? Some people are like, well, when the blessing comes, I'll start digging. When I see water, I'll start digging. When I see some water trickling out of some hill, then I'll start digging. No, that's a sign of unbelief. When people start saying, no, you know, when, <coughs> when God meets the need, then I'll believe. Or when, when all the money's in the bank, then we'll start moving and doing something. No, that's not what God said. That's a sign of unbelief. Belief, faith says, I don't have to see it with my natural eye. I believe it in my heart because God said it. That's what faith says. And that's what God is saying to us. God said it and we're going to get ready for it. That's what Jehoshaphat and Jehoram was saying. God wants to provide and heal. God wants to restore and God promised to do it. And now we are going to prepare to receive it. Here's the deal. This is not going to happen in the way you've seen it happen in the past. The Lord told me to remind you just like he did to Jehoram and Jehoshaphat. The way you've seen God work in the past is not the way he's going to do it this time. God told them, you start digging ditches. I'm going to fill this valley with water. You're not going to see wind or rain. In other words, the other day with Elijah on Mount Carmel, there was a drought and I answered him through rain. But this time I'm not going to do it the way I've done it in the past because that's the way you expect it. And I'm going to do it this way in a way that's going to require you to have complete faith in me. It's going to cause you to have to absolutely live utterly dependent upon me. I'm not going to do this the way I've always done it. I'm not going to do, the, do this the way you expect. I'm not going to do this the way everybody else thinks I ought to do it. I'm going to do it my way and it's going to be a different way. What's that way, God? Just start digging dishes, ditches and I'll show you. 
What's the way, God? You start digging ditches and believe my promise that there's going to be water and I'll take care of the how it's going to get here. I believe it for you right now. It would have been a lot easier to start digging those ditches if there had at least been a cloud in the sky that said it was about to rain. But no, God said, God said, right here with no, no rain in sight in this barren place, you start digging and you keep digging it. And you keep digging it when people are looking at you. And some of your family right now, they start looking at you saying, hey, what you doing? What you doing over there? You're going to have to tell them, I'm digging a ditch. What you doing that for? Because I'm believing there's going to be water. Water? There ain't even no sign of rain. I know, but God said your water is coming. Your family is going to look at you and say, have you seen the weather forecast? James Finn said there ain't going to be no rain. For days there ain't no rain coming. He said, but God said there's going to be water and I'm digging a ditch to prepare for the promise. And your family's going to say, did you see the doctor's report? Because he said no rain, no hope. You say God said hope. God said water. They say, have you seen what your marriage said? No hope and no rain. You say, I'm going to keep digging because God told me there's water. Come on, your other people are gonna look at you from the office and say, you heard what your product, you heard what your prodigal said to you? That's no sign of rain. You say, that's not what God said. I heard what they said, but that ain't what God said. Come on. You say, well, the bank account says no rain, but God said water and I'm gonna keep digging. And that's what you gotta do in spite of anything else anybody else says, or no matter what it looks like, you start preparing for the blessing. Why? Because God said, water's coming. So I'm gonna dig and I'm gonna get ready for the water. Now listen to what right here, what happened. Oh, I love this. God said, this valley's gonna be filled with water. Hallelujah. And I believe it. I'm digging right now, not because I think water might come, but because I am sure that water will come. And I love it. Verse 18 says, this is a simple thing for God. <laughs> Not only is he going to provide the water, he's going to destroy your enemies while he's at it too. Not only is he going to meet your need to give you water because you're thirsty, he's going to destroy your enemies for you. And it's a simple thing. Come on. The marriage problem in your life, it's simple for God. The prodigal that's away from God, it's simple for God to fix. The family strife that's going on in your home, it's simple for God. The empty bank account, don't know how you're going to pay your bills, don't know where the money's coming from to build the vision, it's simple for God because there is nothing too hard for God. And the Bible says in the 20th verse, I'm going to read it right here, the next day, about the time of morning sacrifice, suddenly the water appeared. Suddenly, it was flowing from the direction of Edom, and there was water everywhere, just like God promised. Now, I want you to listen to me right here, your friend, okay? Can they see me good because of the rain? The what sun, not the rain, but the sun. Here's what the Lord told me to tell you. You ready? If Israel and Judah had disobeyed and not prepared, the blessing would have just passed them by. The measure of water that was available to them was directly connected to how faithful they had been to dig the ditches. Can I tell you that again? The measure of water that was available to them, the measure of blessing they received was directly connected to how faithful they had been to dig the ditches. The more ditches, the bigger the ditches, the more water they had, the more blessing they had received. Though it was hard and hot, dirty work, the more they dug, the more blessing they received. Honey, I'm here to tell you right now, in the middle of the dry place that you've been in, you've got to keep digging. You've got to keep digging. You've got to prepare for the blessing. Prepare for the blessing because God promised it. Are you in a dry, in a barren place? Then you need to keep digging. Start digging right there in the desert. Start digging right there in the dry place and keep digging and make this valley full of ditches. You're in a valley right now, start digging ditches because you believe God's gonna keep his word to you. Not one ditch, but as many ditches as you can. You say, how am I gonna do this? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, Karen Wheaton, I've gotta have some miracles I'm believing God for that only God can do to help us build 
a camp for kids and a building and an auditorium called the ramp for kids. I gotta have a miracle. So God has promised me water. I've got a word, I've got a promise. And now he says, Karen, start getting ready for it. Start digging ditches. Start getting ready for that. Now what does digging ditches look like? I'll tell you what it looks like. I'm getting rid of everything that's standing in the way of my blessing. So right now there's dirt there. That dirt represents I'm getting rid of unbelief. There goes the unbelief. I'm getting rid of fear. Come on, that fear, there's a big old water fear. That fear's gotta go. Come on, I'm getting rid of some people that's trying to speak doubt in my life and discourage me. I may have to let some people go too. So there you go. Anything that's in the way, that's what digging is. You're getting rid of the stuff that's in the way from containing the promise of God. Come on, you get distractions out of the way. You get the clutter out of the way. You get the disobedience out of the way. Come on, whatever it takes to dig that ditch to prepare for the blessing of God in Jesus' name. How do you do that today? By faith, by faith. I am believing with you. God has promised us water in the dry place and in the dry season. And I believe you and me right now have to get ready for it. We're gonna pray desperate prayers and we're gonna do, we're gonna do practical things. We're gonna get ready because I believe the promise more than I believe anything else in this world. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray right now for my friends. I pray, God, that you will give them renewed hope and renewed faith, not to look at the dry, barren place they've been in. And I pray that they will not listen to the people telling them they look like a fool for keeping on digging. I pray, God, that they will dig and they will dig ditches for their family. They'll dig ditches for their city. They'll dig ditches for this nation that desperately needs the water of your spirit. Father, I pray that you'll give them renewed strength to never give up because I believe, God, the water is coming just like you promised in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you comment below. Will you do that, sweetheart? Come on. I want you to say this in the comments. I'm digging my ditch. I am digging my ditch. Tell me that. Come on. I'm digging my ditch for this ministry. I'm digging this ditch right now for my family to get ready to hold the blessing of God. And say, and some of you may say, I'm digging my ditch for my family. You can say, I'm digging my ditch because I believe the water is coming. I believe my answer is coming and I'm getting ready for my blessing. All right. Comment below, sweetheart. Share this message with your friend. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. Come on. Till then. Come on. Till then. All the way.